Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to Wings of Intercession Prophetic Prayer Moment. I'm Prophetess Misty Goodwin. We're under the leadership of our pastor, Dr. Russell Antonio Goodwin Sr. We ask that you be the evangelist of the ministry. Invite others on the call for you don't know who has need of Jesus this morning. And I just believe that the Lord shall do exceedingly abundantly. Above all, we can ask or think according to the power working in each and every one of us. We thank God for you being here today. And I'm in agreement with God for your life. I'm in agreement with God for whatever you have need of today. I'm in agreement with God for his plans for you. I'm in agreement with God for his promises that are yes and in him, yes and amen. I'm in agreement with God that there will be a day of breakthrough and a day of liberty and a day of freedom and a day of impartation, a day of wise counsel, glory to God, a day of revelation and insight. Hallelujah. I feel the glory of God. I just believe this day has been set in stone that the Lord shall do a mighty work in our lives, that he's going to visit us and give us a demonstration of who he is in our lives. Glory to God. I just believe that this day God has set aside for us to see his glory, that he's going to infuse us with faith. Glory to God to demonstrate who he is in the earth. And uh, last night I went to sleep and I heard the Lord say, wake up to wealth. Now, of course, right in that moment, um, Again, I thought, okay, we're coming, we're waking up to unexpected checks in the mail or downloads, uh, some, some things that financially are going to break free. And not that I'm not saying that when I woke up this morning, I woke up to the wealth of the word, hallelujah, the word of the Lord that is sure that is going to give us value and give us guidance through these times and seasons we're living in, this is the wealth of our lives. Glory to God. So we're waking up to wealth. I, 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 I'm telling you, my, my spirit begins to leap because when we wake up daily to pray, God leads us and guides us in the way of intercession and gives us directions for our lives. And that is so valuable. And we don't take this time of coming together to pray and to intercede and to get wise counsel, glory to God, from the Holy Spirit who will lead us and guide us in all truth. So we're waking up to wealth daily before we pray. The Holy Spirit is downloading words of wisdom, words of knowledge and revelation and filling my mouth with prophetic utterance of what he is saying. And I am thankful for the wealth of the uh, waking up to wealth daily. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so I want to share with you how God is going to lead us and guide us through these perilous times. The Lord is going to lead us and guide us through these perilous times that we're living in right now. And we need the wisdom of God for guidance and direction through these things that are taking place, the calamity that is taking place. Glory to God. Uh, Hallelujah. We were looking up um, things that we were uh, preparing to do. And I saw the great destruction in California and I constantly am sharing that we're praying for Texas and Georgia and California and Florida and uh, New York. Hallelujah. And Iowa. Hallelujah. Louisiana. These states are, are, are really under watch because they have not repented and they have not, they have not turned back to the father and things God has said, not that they don't have people that live there, that pray, that intercede, but these are on the watch. We have to continuously pray. And they, they were saying that it was so much great destruction in California, that these storms that they have seen, they have never seen before. And I heard the Lord said, prepare my people for these perilous times that we live in glory to God. So we're going to go to second Tim, second Timothy chapter three. It says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemies, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof and from such people turn away 
For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives gullible women. The other Bible version says silly women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts. Glory to God. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith, but they will progress no further. For their folly will be manifest to all as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, talking to Timothy, matter of life, purpose, and faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Akinam, at Lystra, hallelujah, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Come on and say, the Lord is going to deliver me out of it all. Hallelujah. And yes, all who desire to live godly in Christ, Jesus will suffer persecution. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ, you will suffer persecution. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you, you must continue in the things which I, which you have learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. And so we see these things manifesting, and yet God says, I'm going to give you some guidance through these perilous times. I'm going to show you how to endure through these perilous times. When calamity come, you won't shrink back. When calamity come, you won't fear. When calamity come, you will not fall into the trap of worry and anxiety. When trouble comes, the Bible says the, it rains on the just and the unjust. But God has given us a covenant. He's given us a promise. He's given us a vow. Hallelujah. To keep us through these times and seasons of life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we are just there. We are here now. And as we are here, we must believe God for his word. Now, perilous means dangerous. It also speaks of that which is difficult or hard to bear. It's also fierce or savage. It also means uh, coming from the root word, reduced strength. And the other Bible, Bible ver version translates to dangerous times. Hallelujah. So when we, we know we are in perilous times and you don't want to be the one to have a form of godliness and deny the power thereof. God has given us power. He's given us the things that we can do to overcome. The first thing you have to do is guard your heart. Hallelujah. Guard your heart for out of it are the issues of life. You also, the Bible tells us, fear not for I am with you. So fear has no place. We are not moved by the attacks of the enemy. We trust God. We rely on God. We rest in the Lord and all of his might. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible said you must build up your most holy faith. And how do you do that? By praying in the spirit. Pastor has been saying this for the last three years that you must pray in the spirit daily. That it must be a part of your regimen daily to pray in the spirit. And if you don't have a prayer language you need to call upon the name of the Lord according to Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask and ask and keep on asking. Knock and the door will be open. Seek and you will find. And that's talking about when you are receiving the impartation of your, uh, your heavenly language. Hallelujah. To pray in heavenly languages is through the unction of the Holy Spirit, through the power that lives and resides on the inside of you. It must be activated. It must be, if you desire it, if you hunger for it, it will come upon you. So if you open your mouth and you begin to speak, I just decree and declare that anyone that does not have a heavenly language, glory to God, if you have not begun to pray in the Spirit, I touch and agree with God, that God is going to fill your mouth with his presence and his power, and it's going to overtake you, and you're going to be able to pray in the spirit, hallelujah, through power and authority and dominion, through the unction of the Holy Spirit, that you're going to hunger and thirst to be able to walk in new, uh, new tongues of fire that will begin to destroy the works of the devil. 
I touch and agree with God today that he's moving by his spirit to lead us and guide us to build us up in our most holy faith. Glory to God. As we walk in this new dimension, uh, as we come through these perilous times, we shall not be moved. I love David. He said, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. And then he said a third time, I shall not be greatly moved. Glory to God. For we know God is with us and we know God is for us. Hallelujah. You must keep yourself in the love of God. Hallelujah. Keeping yourself in the love of God takes great care. It requires you to dedicate all of your life to the father. And and listen, you must, must really walk heavy in your marriage in the love of Christ. Hallelujah. Through the scriptures, hallelujah, love is patient and love is kind and and love is not deceitful and love is not fault finding and love keeps no record of wrong. You really have to walk heavy in love in your marriage to overcome these perilous times that's trying to destroy the covenant. Glory to God. And if you're a woman, you already know the scripture I'm going to give you if you've been under any counsel with me. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 1 Peter 3, if your husband is found in sin, if he's found doing evil, he's found doing wrong, uh, you're going to win him over by a quiet and meek spirit. And you know, my counsel is that you need to be quiet in the natural and pray loud in the spirit. Hallelujah. To dedicate your time in prayer, to undergird your marriage, to undergird your spouse, to stand on the word that you will not give in to the perilous times. These perilous times are full of deceitfulness. Oh, glory to God. Through, you know, innocent conversations and innocent relations will turn to destruction in your marriage. If you're not careful what you feel like you're lacking, the enemy will fill it with the person that you work with, your coworkers, your friends. Hallelujah. Those around you who feel, uh, uh, who are yielded to the devil. And so what happens in perilous times in your marriage is the enemy comes in glory to God and he feels another person with your, what what you feel you're lacking. The inadequacies that you feel are there in your marriage. The enemy begins to fill it with someone else. Hallelujah. And now they're your mental support or your emotional support or your physical support or your sexual support. And now you're falling into the trap of destruction in these perilous times because again remember that the perilous means that you give it give out of strength hallelujah it is there to sap the life out of you glory to God so these perilous times is not just through the calamity not just through the weather it is after your covenant and you've got to fight the good fight of faith you got to hold on to it doesn't matter how young or how old or how many years you've been married don't think you're safe Without doing the work, you need to really build up your marriage and in your most holy faith and saying, I'm not going to give in and I'm not going to lose strength and I'm not going to give up and I'm not going to fall into destruction. I'm not going to call fall into confusion. I'm not going to fall into being discouraged or I'm not going to fall into wanting to give up. I'm not going to fall into think I can intermingle in and in, in sin. Hallelujah. And think that God could continue to bless my house. Yet yeah, and so don't give up on your children we know that these are rebellious times and children are disobedient to them and there's a, a fight on your family we understand that but you must pray in the holy ghost hallelujah jesus and you must keep yourself pure glory to god you must keep yourself pure and you must rejoice in the lord hallelujah you gotta rejoice in the lord always hallelujah jesus hallelujah Je- god has to be the center of your joy not through people. A lot of you are discouraged in your marriage because you want your spouse to be your joy, but God is the center of your joy and the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so what is going to happen? You need the strength of the Lord in these perilous times. Hallelujah. 
You need the strength that is available daily. Hallelujah. You need the strength of your heart to be planted and rooted in God. Hallelujah. You need your soul anchored in the Father. Hallelujah. Y'all, you need to have the eyes of the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, your eyes have to be fixed on Jesus. Huh? This is why he says, do not look to the left and do not look to the right. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He is the author. He's the finisher of your faith. We're getting ready to pray, but I'm, I'm telling you right now that these days is going to grow harder and harder. But those who walk with the Father and really are dedicated to him and really are sold out to him and really say, I want to preserve my faith. I want to preserve my relationship with God. I want to preserve my marriage. Glory to God. I want to preserve my family. Glory to God. I want to preserve my mind and my heart. And those that are single, it is so easy right now to fall into the trap of being discouraged. Listen, perilous times also means that you don't have the strength to fight. You don't have the strength to wait on the Lord, but you remember what I say. I said, you have to purposely wait on God, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he's going to strengthen your heart. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that we're waking up to the wealth of the morning. Hi, the word is our wealth. And you're filling us with words of wisdom, words of knowledge and revelation, spiritual insight and understanding and prophetic insight. Oh, God, we understand we're living in perilous times. We hunger and thirst after righteousness. We ask that you continuously fill us with your presence. And as you fill us with your presence, God, we need the power to overcome the adversity in every area of our life. Lord, I pray that in the midst of this adversity, I hear the Lord saying, do not allow, nor shall you indulge in overeating because of anxiety. Do not allow the enemy to turn you to overindulging. Oh, see, gluttony and greed are interlocked together. And what happens is when these times come and you're dealing with your trauma, you fall into the trap of overindulging, whether it's sexual sin, overeating, hallelujah, binge watching TV, all these things we do to fill ourselves and occupy our time. You need to fill yourself with the word. You need to fill yourself with his presence. You need to fill yourself up. The more this thing gets aggressive, when I say thing, we talk about spirits. We talk about principalities. Listen, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to, I'm doing a teaching on a Wings of Intercession Prophetic Institute. It's coming soon. Uh, the principalities. Remember, if you look at the word principalities, the first word is prince, and then principles, and then principalities. Glory to God. And we're dealing with the principalities of perilous times. These principalities are getting stronger and stronger. And so as they get stronger, we have to grow stronger in the Lord. Our eyes have to be fixed on Jesus. Our ears have to be fine tuned to hear the voice of God. Our heart has to adhere to what the spirit of God has said. Our soul must be anchored in the father. And if you have not filled yourself up with God and empty yourself out of your flesh, you're going to fall into the trap of these perilous times and you won't even know you're there. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for opening our eyes that we don't fall into the trap. Opening our ears that we can hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Opening our heart to adhere what the Spirit of God is saying to our spirit. Oh, that our spirit has been infused with the Spirit of the Lord. Strengthening us in places that we are weak. Oh, that we can be mighty and strong in you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that our eyes will not grow weak or weary. Our eyes will stay fixed on Jesus. Our eyes.
eyes will not look to the left or right. Our eyes will keep our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. We will not fall to the perilous times by being silly women. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that they will not be bound by their sins. They will not be bound by the lust of their uh, flesh. They will not be bound by the ignorance. They will not be bound by deceitfulness. They will not be bound by confusion. They will not be bound by weariness. They will not be bound by uh, being frustrated and overwhelming. They will not be bound by lacking knowledge. They will not be bound by uh, untruths, oh God. Oh Lord, cover us in your blood from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet that we will begin to know and discern how the works of the enemy is working. And as we work this work of faith, as we build up our most holy faith, Lord, strengthen the men to be able to be a great provider for their family. And I hear the Lord saying to the men, not only shall you provide financially, may you provide the emotional support of your family. May you be present to provide the mental capacity of the things that the enemy will do to chip away at your marriage. May you provide a safe place in your home. May you be found not getting caught up in sexual sin and the Perversion through pornography and all these deceitful things that take place in social media. May God guard your heart and guard your eye gates that you will not fall into the trap of deceitfulness in the name of Jesus. And may you cover your home in prayer and may you be found faithful to the Lord and what he's calling you to do as the leader. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we cover the men. We cover our kings in the blood that they will not fall to the trap of being weary on their jobs and overwhelmed by the pressures of life financially. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I pray through these perilous times that not that there will be no destruction financially over their homes, uh, but they will be able to steward well all that you've given them to provide and they will find a way, uh, a way of escape in the time of temptation. Oh Father, we pray for our children that they will not be dis disobedient, rebellious children of this world. And if they're found in this place, oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we believe that your power is going to overtake them now in the name of Jesus and that our children shall rise and call us blessed in the name of Jesus and that they'll be covered in the blood from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet in the name of Jesus, uh, that premature death will not be our portion in the name of Jesus, that they will not fall into the trap of deceitfulness in the name of Jesus, that that their eyes can see and their heart can adhere to what the Spirit of God is saying in the name of Jesus. They have discernment to make wise decisions and choose those around them wisely in the name of Jesus. They will listen to the voice of God and obey his instructions in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we will hear your voice and obey your instructions in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we will not be led astray with our fleshly and our selfish ambition in the name of Jesus, but we'll be found walking the straight a narrow road in the name of Jesus. And where we are, we, God, you are making us stronger in the name of Jesus. And where we are frustrated, you're releasing the pressure now in the name of Jesus. Where we are confused, you're giving us guidance and direction in the name of Jesus. Where we're falling into the trap of finding ourselves with no strength, you're giving us all power in the name of Jesus. Wherever we don't know what to do, God, you're showing us the guidance that we need in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we decree and declare today that we're driving out the enemy in our homes. We're driving out confusion in our homes. We're driving out the spirit, any spirit that will rest in our homes. We're driving out every strong man that will try to overtake our homes. We're driving out every deceitful thing, every wicked thing, every lying thing that will try to rest upon our lives. We drive out gluttony in the name of Jesus. We drive out the spirit of confusion in the name of Jesus. We drive out double-mindedness in the name 
name of Jesus. We drive out the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. We drive out every demonic witchcraft thing that was set up against our lives in the name of Jesus. Every word curse that was spoken, we drive it out now in the name of Jesus. We thank God that the power of the Lord is resting upon us in the name of Jesus. That wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty in the name of Jesus. We call upon the name of the Lord. He will answer us in the name of Jesus. We cry out unto the Lord when we are in trouble. He will help us in the name of Jesus. We cry out for the land to be covered in the blood in the name of Jesus. We come against the great calamity of the earth in the name of Jesus. We cry out for mercy for the weather patterns that will cause great destruction in the name of Jesus. We cry out for wisdom for those that are serving us in the country. Oh, God, for all the troops, God, those that serve in any capacity, we cry out for mercy. We cry out for protection. We cry out for safety. We cry out, God, that you will protect them from harm and danger. In the name of Jesus, we cry out for the protection of our borders. In the name of Jesus, we cry out for the right president, oh, Father, in the name of Jesus. We cry out for our, for the welfare of those that do not have. We cry out for provision, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. We cry upon the name of the Lord to send angels on assignment where we need help and we don't know we need help. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you that in the midst of these perilous times, you are with us and you are for us. And we have peace and we have truth. And we can rest in the Lord and the power of your might. Not worried, not stressed, not moved, not not, uh, shakable. None of these things shall move us. We believe in Psalms 91. A thousand may fall at one side and 10,000 may fall at the other, but it shall not come near our dwelling, shall not come near our children, shall not come near our health, shall not come near our finances, shall not come near our resources, shall not come near the body of Christ nor the church, shall not come near our dwelling places wherever we are, shall not come near the schoolhouse, shall not come near the United States of America, shall not come near Texas, Georgia, Florida, hallelujah, Jesus, Louisiana, Iowa, hallelujah, Washington, New York, we cry out for mercy, for a hedge of protection over every state that is mentioned, every place our feet steps high. There is a great protection on our jobs, in our businesses, in our bank accounts. Secure our valuables, God. Secure our hearts, O oh Lord. Secure our minds, O oh Lord. Secure our souls, O oh God. Secure our marriages, O oh Father. Secure the singles, O oh Lord. Protect their minds and hearts, O Lord. Let them not fall into the trap of deception, O Father. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. Wherever there is calamity, wherever there is paralysis, O God, I pray that there's a hedge that will be around our social media pages and everywhere we move and everywhere we walk and I cover the movement center church and every church open in your name that there will not be the sleep sneakiness that will rise through great destruction oh father those who come that seem to want to care for the sheep but they are really wolves exposed reveal and remove in the mighty Jesus protect our children from all the, the sexual sin and, and all the gateways of hell that will come against this next generation. We bind up the works of the enemy through the spirit of perversion that will try to have sex trafficking and rape and molestation. And we bind up the evil works of the devil that will try to harvest our organs, oh God. We plead the blood of Jesus over every state that has secret agents on assignment to cause great destruction destruction and we call up for the missing children and those who are lost oh god lost souls uh, roaming through different dimensions oh god through the demonic forces of the eyes that they have conjured up through this oh god lord jesus We shut the eye that the children have opened. 
the ones that were conjuring up spirits and didn't understand. We shed every demonic door that has opened, that released. I, I see a release of these principalities that were opened through these children are searching for the eye of the spirit that have conjured up through sorcery and witchcraft. We bind it up now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for the wisdom of God to rest upon families who have children who have opened the gateway of the, that eye, that eye that opens up the spirit of perversion and perilous times and these principalities that will try to overtake regions. We shut that door now, every demonic door and every window that was open from heaven to earth, from to and fro, every rim, every dimension of heaven. Hallelujah. The gateway of hell be shut now. I see the gateway of hell open, but I decree and declare that it is shut now.